Network topology. Kind of one of those features that when you dive into the whole prosumer side of home networking, you kind of sometimes get a little bit excited about it. So in today's video, I want to talk about that and maps. What is up YouTube? Jason here with By My Bits. Today I want to talk about topology and maps, but more specifically, topology and maps on the Omada network system. That's right, TP-Link has sent me over some devices to test, which include a router, a controller, a switch, a couple uh, wireless access points, and I think that's it. One of the biggest things that I really was excited to check out was to look at the topology of the network, how it broke it down, how easy it was to read, just to see like what the layout was. I'm sure you're familiar with what a topology is, but basically it's just like an overview, heads up screen that just shows what's connected to what, gives you a little branch off tree thing, and it kind of allows you to visualize your network, but just in a nice little graphic. This could be a very big deal, especially if you're trying to track down a problem, you have a large amount of things on your network, being able to kind of break it down, see what's connected to what, and see maybe if there's an issue with, you know, something being connected correctly. Overall, topology is a great tool to kind of analyze and look at what your network layout looks like, and make adjustments accordingly if you want to. So this is one of the bigger things with Amato I wanted to check out and I will do my best to try not to compare to the Unify system. I'm still probably going to, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm calling cap, shut up. So let's dive right in with the Omada topology. Like I said, I have the devices that I have, so it's not super complicated. In fact, my main network has a lot more stuff going on, so it's a little bit more clustered. First and foremost, one of the great things that I like about the Omada topology is the color coding. I know I said I wanna compare it to Unify, but Unify is just kinda of like all blue or dotted lines, and sometimes it can just be a mess. But with the devices that I have, the topology is extremely easy to read. The color coding makes it just that much easier by breaking it down to certain colors depending on the connection speed that those devices are connected at. So at the top right hand corner, you can go to the legend and you can actually see what colors relate to what connection speed. For example, orange is like a 10100 connection. So the TPO Mata controller does not require a gigabit connection. Therefore, it is orange because it's slow. Whereas the green is is the standard one gigabit per second. Different variations of blue or aqua will give you 2.5, 5, or 10 gigs per second. And then of course you have dotted lines with the little box that says 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. I really do like the coloring system. And like I said, I do wanna see how it works when you expand it to a very large network. But just as my first experience, my first impression, I look at this and I say, you know what? This is actually kind of easy to read. I will give you one very specific use case scenario here. And yes, you can find this kind of stuff in Unify. I'm just using Amada for today's video. Hypothetically speaking, let's say you run your own cables, you're doing your own, you know, jacks, something like that. And for whatever reason, the connection works, but it's only kicking over to a 100 megabit per second connection because you screwed things up and your cable sucks. Yes, it's still shown available on the network, but no, it is not doing what it should at the speeds of which it should be doing. So having a topology that breaks everything down in a nice crispy little color coding scheme just makes me a little bit attracted to it. Next up, we have the devices themselves. Again, Unify, they do their own thing. You can, you know, hover over it and you get a box. But with Omada, it breaks everything down into nice, solid, easy to read white boxes. Inside the white boxes, it give you an icon and give you a little bit of information about the device. You can even click on this pops up a right hand screen to give you more information, which is nice. I hate to divert a little bit, but let's say if you click on a switch, for example, it'll pop up from the right. Again, Unify does this, but it'll pop up from the right and you can see what ports are doing what. You can see how much power it's uh, serving or how much it has available. You can look at devices, see what ports they are. I mean, it gives you all kinds of very quick information where you're not leaving the topology screen, but you can still view and make changes to certain things for every device. So nice and easy to use, no complaints there. There's only one thing that I was really looking for that I was drastically disappointed, which during my research, I really didn't find a lot of options for this. There are some systems that do it, but in my system, I actually hooked up a very 
basic switch behind my main computer. And rather than the Omada system recognizing, hey, this is a switch, there's multiple things, etc., it just clumps them all in to connect it to port five. It doesn't actually give, the, uh, give me the ability to say, this is a switch, this is why they're all on the same port, obviously, and adjust my topology accordingly. And as far as I know, there's not a lot of other options out there that allow you to do that, but oh my gosh, that would be just, It'd be amazing, let's be honest. I can't even do this on my Unify system, so who am I to complain? But fact of the matter is, is when you're switching everything over, unless you have the money to legitimately go full send into a new ecosystem and buy all of their switches, all of their products, and actually have them be recognized by that ecosystem in your topology, this is where things can get kind of messy. I mean, the router itself has the ability to say, hey, this host name is this, this MAC address is this, and hey, there's three or four things connected to port five on this switch. And that doesn't make sense because last time I tried to shove five cables into one hole, I got, wait, it just doesn't work. So obviously there's a switch and I really wish Omada would add the option to add your own custom hardware, define it by a MAC address to say yes, this is a switch. Let's rebuild my topology and make this just a little bit cleaner. To play devil's advocate, of course, this would maybe not encourage people to buy more and more TP-Link Omada products just because they wanna fix their topology. But on the flip side from Omada's position, they're really trying to break into that prosumer market. They're trying to grab some of those Unify users and they wanna get them over to their ecosystem. I think it's gonna be small, but probably somewhat key features like this that is going to put more power into the hands of consumers who are going to be building their network over time and still has some leftover hardware that they wanna use. The next thing is going to be groups, specifically clients. What Amato likes to do is just kind of group everything automatically to try to clean up that whole topology experience, but you can still go through and you can click on the client group and you can see what is part of that box. It'll usually give you a number. It'll say how many clients are connected. So if you click on that box, you should have a pretty good understanding of how many devices are gonna pop up. On one hand, this whole thing is gonna clean up the experience. Maybe you don't wanna see everything. You're just trying to track down the main components of your network. On the other hand, let's say if you wanna see everything, that means you're gonna be going through and clicking a few boxes. The great thing here though, is that you can shrink them pretty easily. You can shrink them all the way down to just like a small arrow. So it definitely cleans it up and allows you to kind of just see what's going on. And you have the ability to either enable or disable the link labels. I personally enjoy the link levels, at least on this smaller scale topology thing that I'm doing. With the link labels, just at a glance, without having to click on anything, it'll tell you what port each line is connected to. So that's really nice, especially if you've got some cameras or multiple switches, whatever. It's just kind of nice having a little bit more information that's elegantly placed into the topology, makes it not confusing, and also, easier to just track down or whatever it is that you want to do. But one of my favorite things, like I said before, being able to click and edit and change certain things is that you actually have some pretty decent power just by clicking on a device. For example, if you've set up different rate limit profiles, you can automatically click on a device and say, you know what, I want to put that on a different profile, slow it down a little bit. You can also give it a nickname just in case Omada didn't actually pull up the host name on it. Maybe it has no idea what it is past the MAC address. And you can even set a fixed IP. So let's say you're hooking up a bunch of cameras, maybe some of them wireless, wired, doesn't matter. But once you find that on your topology, you know exactly what it is, you can click on that, pop that thing out, and you can change it all from that screen. And you never have to leave your topology, which that is pretty nice. Again, not saying Unify doesn't have some of this, I'm just trying to show you what Omada offers. One last thing, I lied, two last things. Within the topology, you have the ability to see what SSID devices are connected to. So this is especially useful if you're running multiple SSIDs and you want to see, you know, what's connected to what just to make sure everything's kosher. And two, if you see something on your network for whatever reason, you want to see the history behind that device as far as how long it was connected and when in the past, you can do that as well. I don't actually have like a use case for this, but I'm sure there's plenty of them out there. I mean, the feature exists and for there's like a deep part of me that thinks, you know what, maybe one day I wanna see how often this thing connected, how long it was connected, maybe the first time it was connected. I think just having that kind of information available 
is, is a really good feature. Let me know what kind of usages you would have for the device history in the comment section down below. And since I'm trying to make this a short snippet-like video, let's move right on to Maps. Yes, Maps is technically in the beta phase, so it's gonna change. But with Maps, you have the ability to upload your own custom layout, which allows you to place your devices around the house and one, you can kind of map things out so you know where things are just in case you have a lot of stuff. You want to be able to find where they are. Specifically useful in like a commercial environment if you have a bunch of stuff running. It could be pretty easy to lose track of what is connected to where and how it's hooked up, etc. But number two, which is kind of cool, but also kind of sucks in its own right. You have the ability to see the radius of which the radios will broadcast from each access point that you add into your own layout. Now I say this is pretty cool because, well, mainly because it's shiny and it's new and I just love playing with it, but it still has its drawbacks. And I really want to reference Unify here. Unify specifically has kind of like a layout generator, like a, a dedicated website. It's not hosted on their, their UDM Pro or anything like that, but they have their own website where you can create, upload whatever, your own floor plan, and then you can put in your own access points. And that website will take, hey, what kind of walls do I have? What are you doing here? Is it indoor, outdoor, insulation, et cetera? You can place your devices, show how high they're placed, whether they're ceiling or wall, etc. And then the Unify version of this will actually calculate the interference that you will get from walls. It'll adjust for windows or back patio doors, etc. Now the Omada map system, on the other hand, is kind of a basic bitch in comparison. So yeah, you can upload your own map, which as you can see here, I created and I upload an extremely and finely detailed map of my house. And I'm talking, I measured every single, this is probably the single most accurate map you have ever seen in your entire life. But as I go through and I add theoretical Wi-Fi points in my house, I get surrounded with color. Like I can hit simulate, it'll surround it with color, showing me the variations of how powerful that signal would be in those certain locations going red, green, blue, whatever, and it just kind of goes out. The problem I have with that is that because it has no consideration for walls, it has absolutely no consideration for any kind of obstructions whatsoever, it is so dumb, it makes it useless. Aside from having the ability to place the devices on this map to just kind of show you where things are for future reference, if you ever have to you know, physically service, remove, replace, whatever those devices, Aside from that, the heat map showing you what the service quality would be in your house is essentially worthless. Since it doesn't factor in the degradation you'll get from walls, interior, exterior, whatever, it really just gives you a circle. And it says, you know, hypothetically, based off of how high this device is, this should be the radius of which you get coverage. And when you compare the Omada beta map system to like Unify, their own little dedicated thing with all the special options and everything, I mean, it's like a caveman discovering fire versus a caveman discovering not fire. I mean, yes, you can change the height of which the access point is going to be mounted, which will change the radius. And if you're working in, let's say, a very large open space, this could actually be useful if you're working in a very large and open space and you have no obstructions and you know maybe you just need a basic radius of signal. Furthermore, you can technically have multiple layers, multiple maps. So if you have like a hotel that you're managing, you got multiple floors, this is great because you can map out where the access points are in, e in every level and you can switch between them. The cool thing though, this is what I really like. This is actually something that I really find useful is that when you're mapping things out, you have everything laid out, whether or not it can tell you what the signal quality is accurately or be completely worthless for the whole signal quality thing, you do have the ability to, at a glance, see how many clients are connected to that device. And you actually have multiple options for like the quick display of information, like how much speed is being used, et cetera. And this is really where I think the tool can be the most useful because if you're trying to track down, you know, maybe a, a bottleneck in your network, you have a bunch of smaller access points or whatever the, the situation is, if you look and you're like, man, 90% are just connected to this area or whatever, 
This allows you to visualize things and kind of go through and maybe change things around. And by change things around, I mean maybe move an access point closer to the area of which is being affected. So overall, it's a great tool, again, to know where your stuff is. It's an even better tool to know how many people are using it and how fast they're going. And because when you're making a map, you can upload your own layout and you can literally define what distance between one area to the other is, it's fairly accurate, I assume, at least, on the radius of which these radios should reach. Like I use my garage, for example. It's really easy to me measure my garage, so I can measure from one point to the other. I can define what that measure is and just link them both together, say, hey, this is 27.75 feet, and then we'll automatically accommodate the rest of that for the map. And so I'm not saying that it doesn't have any uses. In fact, I am excited to see where this goes. I would love to see an option to at least bare minimum, add walls. Even if they're invisible or just really don't affect your overall layout, it would just be nice to add walls, like interior walls or exterior walls. Yeah, there's a bunch of different type of walls out there, but Unify does it. Maybe Yomare TP-Link can start stealing some of those features that uh, T or Unify has. I'm not, I don't. believe it or not, guys, I really wanted this to be like a five or 10 minute video. So hopefully it didn't go too far over. But if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything that I said today, make sure to post those in the comments section down below. While you're there, give me any suggestions of specific features you would be looking for if you're going to maybe switch to a system like this. As always, thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself. A great day.